if you are not prepared to come to that table and to represent that voice, don't come. Because we don't need any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. We don't need black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't need Muslims that don't want to be a Muslim voice. We don't need queers that don't want to be a queer voice. Come on, speak it. Under U.S. law, uh, you know, we admit a certain number of refugees from all around the world based on some fairly narrow criteria. I want you to know that you belong, that this is our country, and no amount of hate-filled bullying from the White House is going to change that. Typically, refugee status is not granted just based on uh, economic need. It's unfortunate that he feels the way he feels about people of color in this country. It's unfortunate the way he feels about immigrants, naturalized citizens or not in this country. Um, but I think what I would tell him is that it's time to move on from him. And it's time to move on from his conception of an America that we have tried to move past from, for a long time. Or uh, because a family lives in a bad neighborhood or poverty. We're gonna fight back together and we're gonna become stronger for it. Please know that I'll never back down. No bully, no kind of attack to silence me is going to work. It's actually gonna make me work harder for you. So fight back with me, walk down all the streets of the 13th Congressional District proudly that you have a Congresswoman that is not gonna sell us out, that is not going to be quiet while there's a continued assault on our working families. It's typically defined uh, fairly narrowly. You have a state, for example, that was targeting a political uh, activist, uh, and they need uh, to uh, get out of the country uh, for fear of prosecution or even death. First, no one is illegal. That term is derogatory now because it dehumanizes people. You can say any other forms of maybe uh, coming in without regulations or, or so forth, but the use of illegal is disrespectful and I ask my colleagues to to try in so many ways to not dehumanize our immigrant neighbors that are trying to come in for a safe haven. Even as we are a nation of immigrants, we're also a nation of laws. Undocumented workers broke our immigration laws and I believe that they must be held accountable, especially those who may be dangerous. That's why over the past six years, deportations of criminals are up 80 percent. And that's why we're going to keep focusing enforcement resources on actual threats to our security. Felons, not families. Criminals, not children. Gang members, not a mom who's working hard to provide for her kids. We'll prioritize, just like law enforcement does every day. I felt like uh, some of the stories were a little overprint. Um, uh, and as I explained to uh, my fellow presidents, uh, under U.S. law, uh, you know, we admit a certain number of refugees from all around the world based on some fairly narrow criteria. Uh, and typically, refugee status is not granted just based on uh, economic need or uh, because a family lives in a bad neighborhood or poverty. Uh, it's typically defined uh, fairly narrowly. You have a state, for example, that was targeting a political uh, activist mm -hmm. uh, and they need uh, to uh, get out of the country uh, for fear of prosecution or even death. There may be some narrow circumstances uh, in which uh, there is a humanitarian or refugee status that a family might...